What's up guys? Um, so for those of you that watch my channel frequently, you know I'm not currently doing tow videos at the moment. What I am trying to do is some of these little mechanic tip videos and little other things I can try to kind of educate on as much as I possibly can. So this video is going to be a mechanical tip on how to adjust air drum brakes on a 2019 Hino 258 or similar vehicles with the style brakes. Um, there's not really any videos out there on this kind of stuff. Um, there are videos for doing semi-truck brakes, which is heavy-duty trucks. This is considered a medium-duty truck. So the premises are pretty much the same, except for some of the tools and stuff you're going to need are a little different. What you're going to need for this is... Nine, or, uh, let's see, focus. Focus. Damn it. Focus. 516s open-end box wrench or uh, metric equivalent i think i have a eight nine millimeter here or something like that um what we've got here is our automatic slack adjuster and if anybody knows anything about air brakes is these don't adjust 100 percent so just to get the basic fundamentals out there this is our drum this big old hunk of metal here uh, of course that's the wheel and then inside here you can see there's the Wear indicator line, and this is our brake shoe. There's actually two of them. There's one on top and one on the bottom. So what we're looking to achieve here on these adjustments, and you do have to do these uh, periodically, is that we have no more than about 1 32nd of clearance between the two. That's how tight we want them. So the easiest trick to doing that is take a business card. Standard thicknesses on these things are about the same as what this is supposed to be. And ideally, you want to barely just be able to slide one business card in between the drum and the shoe, just like I'm doing right there. That's about how much clearance you want. All right, this one's already adjusted, but uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you guys anyways. On these slack adjusters, there is a release button to be able to turn it backwards. You have to pull this out. I find it's kind of a pain in the butt, so what I like to do is get it out already and just shove something in there to kind of hold out that's why I've got this open end box wrench holding the button out um, on the bottom of the slack adjuster and this is where things different because on the semi trucks it's going to be a 7 16 wrench and nut in this case we have a square uh, headed slack screw I don't know if you can see that let me put the wrench on there it might help you can see right here, there's a square nut or square bolt. That's our slack adjuster uh, screw. So what we're looking to do, and, and this one, you're gonna turn it counterclockwise. So the old saying, a righty tighty lefty loosey, that's not the case on this one. So generally here's what I do, and this works all the time, is I take it, well actually that's going clockwise. So that's loosening. Counterclockwise is tightening. So what I'll do is I'll take the wrench, tighten it, until I basically can't turn it anymore. You hear that sound right there? That's the springs and the brakes bottoming out. So I'll tighten it to there. And I'll use some kind of reference point. Ideally, I'll take the wrench and probably come straight out like that. And what I'll do is I'll back it off. One quarter turn. And this is kind of the same idea for the semi-trucks. So remember, I started out right here like that. I'm straight out towards the frame. So I move my finger out the way. I'm trying to hold the phone here and record this at the same time, so bear with me, guys. All right, so I'm straight out right there, and I'm gonna back it out one quarter turn so the wrench is pointing straight towards me. I know it doesn't look like that in the video, but that's exactly what it is right there. That's one quarter turn. That's it. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go forward just a tiny, tiny bit. And the reason I do that is, is now I'm going to pull my wrench that's holding my button out. And you see how that button just went in? Like I said, that's the release. But these are kind of a pain in the butt to grab with your fingers. Uh, usually a screwdriver works. Now I'm going to take that nut or that bolt and just back it the tiny little bit until it stops. And now it's caught on that locking retain. And what that does is that keeps it from backing off. So as it goes forward, it clicks a little gear mechanism in there and it locks it so it can't back off. Now that right there is the quarter turn method. And this goes back into saying where I say the business card trick. So now I take my business card 
I just verify, and that business card barely fits. I shouldn't be able to fit two of these. So if you stack two of these together, they should not fit. That's how you want these adjusted. I've already gone around and done them all, but like I said, this is just a quick tip on how to do this. Uh, obviously, while you're in here, you want to inspect your actual brakes themselves, since you can see them from in here. I can see I've got plenty of pad. I'm no more than I'm not more than 50% down, which I'm actually probably about 80%. So these pads are still pretty good. The wear indicator right here. Generally, when that wear indicator hits this plate, when you can't see that anymore, you're already screwed. You don't want to be there. Uh, you you want to be no on, on these. You you really don't want to be any more than halfway down. Uh, and these shoes always taper off too. So as you use your brakes, the thicker part's going to be the middle. The thinner part's going to be the outside. There is a measurement on these on how far you don't want to go. Um, I don't know offhand, but as you can see, you know, we taper on the edges. So, that's why I said you don't want to be more than 50% of that line, or uh, I think it's like 6.30 seconds or 7.30 seconds, somewhere around there. I don't know. I can't remember offhand, but ideally, you don't want to be more than, don't want to be down more than a quarter way of the pad or a quarter inch. And I use that measurement from the end, not the middle. That always means I change the brakes out earlier so that I don't have any issues. Because if you get metal to metal, you're going to be buying expensive drums too. And those are not cheap. Um, and while you're in here, obviously check and make sure everything's tight. And uh, you don't have any issues with your uh, linkage pins. This is the air can or the pancake can for the front brake. This doesn't have a parking brake on the front. That's why these cans are a little bit smaller single action versus the parking brake cans which are on the rear axle or dual action there's also a measurement to check off these but obviously if you're adjusted on this this isn't going to throw out so much so you're going to be within those measurements anyways um, when you go through a truck inspection they're generally going to check that the throw of that to make sure it's not going out too much um, that's pretty much it i mean I'm, I'm sure i can probably go on for more but hey which way thanks guys for watching Hopefully you found this useful. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all on the next one.